We start today with continuing coverage from Puerto Rico as the protests there continue for Governor Pedro Perluisi to cancel Luma's electric contract on the island. Our Francis Felix brings us an update. Thousands of people banning these organizations and politics march to La Fortaleza Street against Luma's energy contract as the operator of the electric grid in the island. Tired of the unreliable electric system, people gather in front of the meeting point at the north side of the capital. The protest started with statements from organizers, speakers from the unions, and citizens who express their dissatisfaction with Luma's service and demand the cancellation of the contract. People start marching at 10 a.m. under the intense heat of the day with protest signs, banners, and flags to the governor's mansion. The social activist Pedro Muniz explained some of the main reasons they are asking for the cancellation of Luma's contract. The uh, contract itself is a one-sided, lopsided contract in favor of Luma. Like for example, in the past, people in Puerto Rico complained because the workers at the uh, Water Resources Authority made $25 an hour, but now the president of Luma makes over $1.2 million plus expenses a year and 22 of the vice presidents make over 250000 They promised that the cost of the uh, energy would be uh, lower or at least would stay constant and we have had seven increases from 1 to 1.8. That means that if you pay $200 now you're paying $360. And for the rich people who take the decisions of this, that's not a problem, but for the people that cannot work it out, this is a very significant uh, uh, aumento, raise. For the Senator Santiago, the electric authority must go back to public hands. It has to return to public hands, but in order to do that, the party that's in power must be willing to do what the others weren't able to. Uh, the politicization and the modernization of PREPA. And that takes uh, a lot of effort and that takes a completely new way of, of understanding how things should work in government. And I think uh, both Partido Popular and Partido No Progresista, they both have proven they are not willing to do that. Citizens express their dissatisfaction and point out the injustice in the recent increases in the electric bill. I'm here to stop the abuse of uh, this company that has really destroyed our electrical system and now is charging us an unbelievable amount of money. I think it's the beginning. I don't think that a march will change anything, but I think it's the beginning to get people excited about the possibility of having something different than what we have right now. They have increased electricity seven times this year. Now there's people who live from check to check. You know, people who, that, I'm here for them. You know, for those people who can really, you know, survive this, this increase. dignifying lives and there's so many costs for electricity and it's not accessible for everyone and it's not fair that the only company that distribu distributes uh, electricity in Puerto Rico is so uh, difficult to pay for the majority of the population. This is going to be the beginning. We won't stop like we didn't deal with Ricky. We won't stop. This march and the demands of the people, Governor Pierre Luisi has indicated that it's obligated to defend Luma's contract. For now, the people has expressed that this is just the beginning and they will continue protesting, hoping for a solution can be found. Reporting from La Fortaleza Street, Puerto Rico, Frances Felix. All right, thanks so much, Francis. In the meantime, switching gears now and pick any spot on Earth, and chances are it is sweltering under record-breaking temperatures. In the U.S. mainland, more than 200 million Americans are dealing with a blistering heat wave that is blanketing much of the country from central California across the Mississippi River Valley and into the northeast. And it looks like it's going to continue through the weekend and well into next week. Jay Gray brings us more from Dallas. 
Good evening, and look, a heat wave tightening its grip right now, really across the country. From California to New England, there are heat advisories in place, some of the worst of it right here in Texas, in Dallas specifically. Today, another day over 100. That makes 25 days so far this year over 100, and it's seven more than 105. So it has just been a blistering heat here, uh, one that most are dealing with by either staying inside or rushing to pools or splash pads like the one you see behind us here. Uh, everyone trying to take it easy. As one 10-year-old told us, it's like living on the surface of the sun. I'm not sure it's that hot, but I can tell you it is really hot and causing some real problems here. Wildfires are an issue across North Texas, several over the last couple of days, including one just west of Fort Worth, still burning at this point and has chased dozens of people from their homes. You've got the ground shifting and cracking with all this extended heat, and that's causing water main breaks, so water's become an issue. And power usage, always a concern here in Texas. ERCOT, the company that regulates all of that, says that yesterday uh, there was a record usage in Texas. That's the tenth time this year they've broken that record, and it could be broken again today. They say they have enough to keep going, but a lot of people very concerned about that moving forward. One other quick note. Uh, first responders telling us that they've done double the number of calls to those suffering from heat-related problems than they did this time a year ago. And the big concern for Texans right now is that it's only going to get worse. August, usually the hottest month of the year here. Well, meantime, as the war in Ukraine rages on and efforts are continuing to help those refugees fleeing the war-torn country, our Marisol Rivera introduces us to a man that is doing his part in giving back by helping feed refugees relocating in Poland. Chef Jose Enrique is no stranger to giving a helping hand in the time of need. He was the first chef called upon by Chef Jose Andres of World Central Kitchen when Hurricane Maria passed through the island. So of course he had to give a helping hand when he found out that World Central Kitchen was cooking in Poland for all the refugees leaving war torn Ukraine. You know, I saw Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen just helping out in Ukraine and I felt like when Maria came here, they stopped by and helped us out so much. They're still helping, actually. I was like, I had to fly out there and do it. And like, just two days later, I was out. Tell us about the amount of meals that you prepared in the time you spent there. Well, we were doing like 8,000 and a little bit more daily. Basically, we were, we were like a home base. So we'd send food to different parts, different locations, different little towns. And it was just 300 here, 400 there, 1,000 here, all day just banging out food. Basically trying to prepare food that they're kind of accustomed to, you know? We're in Puerto Rico, they're trying to give them rice and beans, you know, they try to give something homey. So you, you're going through a time of need and this kind of brings you back, you know, it, it helps.